I think it's really important. It provides another gateway um, from Preston um, into the Fylde area. And it also gives the opportunity for not just economic growth, but also uh, more tourism. And just think with the Enterprise Zone coming on um, line at um, Squires Gate, it opens the doors for more people to be able to focus on that as being an employment area. And then also ask that does this new study hold the potential of opening up the new benefits of running trams down to Lytham? Absolutely. Times have moved on. I think that um, with different governments and different local councils now people become more entrepreneurial. I think that people through tourism their patterns are changing and we need to completely, you know, clear the decks, let's look at it all again and let's do some blue sky thinking. Technologies change. Then I was to ask that how many more trams did you think there would be needed to run on that section and where would the housing? I mean obviously we've got 18 now. Um, if we have to run a more frequent service to more destinations then the numbers will increase. So back to the drawing board, you know, we'll have to see. And of course the ultimate question would be if there was a tram line down to Lytham, would they run heritage tours? Possibly, yeah. I mean, we've got a great product, you know, why would you keep these beautiful machines from not being seen on the South Fylde line? Probably, yes. Vernon Smith, who is an active member of Brefrua, I asked him what he thinks the common view would be and how practical new transport mechanism would function of today. The South Fylde line has enquiries going on at the moment to improve the free service frequency. But in the wider context of public transport for the whole of the Fylde coast, the session today has introduced a number of talking points, but the primary result needs to be that all the local councils take a common view about what is the way to improve public transport. It must be remembered that public transport in all its forms will take people out of cars and in the coastal area that we have with limited areas of urbanity all in a confined space that pressure on space means that you need to very, use a very efficient transport mechanism which all versions of public transport together can provide. And it's only fair to ask a potential passenger, Joseph Jolly, who often uses the local transport network here on the Fowl Coast. I asked him, does he think it's a good idea? Yes, because at the moment there's not enough services into Lytham St. Towns from obviously South Shore and Preston. And if we can have more reliable service, like here in Manchester, Nottingham, Edinburgh, then hopefully there'll be more tourists into the Fowl Coast in Lytham and Blackpool and more money will also be made from the gross messy products. The chap behind the campaign to running trams to Lytham, Sam Flynn, was obviously there. I asked him on his reflection of the day's events. I think it's been a very good day. Uh, I'm happy with the turnout. I'm happy with the people who have come. We've got councillors, we've got experts, uh, we've got members of the public, which is important. I think the speakers so far have done an excellent job of conveying all the different options and all the different types of light rail and other transport modes. Do you think it's going to give you more of a positive step towards promoting the concept of taking trams down to Lytham by networking and meeting all these different people? Absolutely. I mean, there's 80 people, 70, 80 people now in this room who have now heard, heard what I've had to say and who have already come to me and given feedback and given uh, their input and say, oh, you did this well, uh, oh, you missed out this. And all of that will come together and to create a better... Uh, scheme overall. Do you think this will accelerate the actual prospect of getting the uh, feasibility study done and moving forward? I mean, what sort of time frame would you think it would take to get the trams down to living? Do you have an idea? Year? Right, well, uh, it's a very complicated question, of course, but assuming that we can get the feasibility bid in uh, this summer and that it's approved and that the tram options come to the forefront and everything's developed properly and crucially that phases are done phases will reduce the overall time scale i think i think within five years we could get a tram down to st Anne's, and within five to ten years we could get it down to lytham and then if there's a phase three to wharton or kirkham maybe okay, for 15, 15 years from the south to the north where they don't have a rail link 
Eddie Fisher, who is a serious active member of the PWRS, what would it mean to the community of either having heavy rail, a tram or a tram train? Yeah, OK, so um, the heavy rail option would give us the, um, the, the benefit of uh, future potential connectivity uh, at Poulton to the heavy rail network beyond. Um, but it wouldn't give us the connectivity to the heart and town centre of Fleetwood. The tram train offers us both the connectivity uh, at Poulton and the heavy network rail uh, beyond, or heavy rail network beyond, um, but it also gives us the connection to the very heart of Fleetwood and potentially could take us right the way up to Fleetwood Ferry and then back. Head of Heritage here for Blackpool Transport, Brian Lindop. I asked him how excited he was for a new a tramway to be running from Blackpool North Pier to Blackpool North Station, helping to connect a seamless mode of transport for the Fylde Coast. Well, thank you for that. That's a very good question. It means a very great deal to me, and I can't even begin to tell you just how excited I am about it. It's a major step out of the past and into the future. 0.2 of a mile may not seem very much to most people, but it's what it brings with it. It's the first step away from that promenade and into Blackpool itself. So it's absolutely crucial because it also will connect up another main mode of transport for which people come to Blackpool and use, and that is of course the railway. But of course it's very, very close to our bus interchange, so it connects everything together basically. And most of them in surveys have shown that the first thing they do is go and catch a tram. So they walk down Talbot Road and they'll go in both directions uniformly. Some go south, some go north. And if they can get on that tram car from just leaving the North Station, just how magic will that be? Do we have an idea of when the tram, dep the, uh, tram terminus will be available to the public? And is it true that you might actually start running trams sooner before the actual facility is open itself? Uh, there'll be no chance of us running anything before the formal opening date because there's no way of turning the trams round. So, you know, you can't run in and out over one piece of track. I mean, you could, but it would be extremely complex and throw a real spanner in the work for the reliability and, and planning of the service. So there'll be nothing in advance. I'm not sure of the final date, uh, but I'm hoping that it'll be somewhere between 2021 and 2022. The sooner the better, really. But. The wait will be worth it because it will give us a fantastic interchange which will, you know, do the job that it, it, it should do. On the day that you officially open the tram line, I think you know what's coming now, are you going to use a heritage tram? I want to, but my colleague who's head of tramway, you know, will be having a battle with me not to. He said, I don't believe you said that in public. He said, I'll fight you for that. And I said, well, I said, yeah, I'll put up a good one. So, you know, we've both, both got our uh, own ideas there, but obviously we should have a new one and an old one together, which goes first in a way is irrelevant, but it's, it's connectivity of the history because one of the last trams that ran there was one of the last trams to run on any of the inland routes. But it's also historically significant for me, especially because the Leighton route of which the North Station link is part of was one of the first two routes to close in 1936. So it is both historically significant and a major milestone in the regeneration of the tramway to actually reinstate that piece of track. And it'll be better than it was before because originally it was single line between uh, the promenade and the first road it crosses, which is Abington Street, whereas it'll be double track all the way down. You've done a marvellous job with Heritage Trams. It makes me very proud being a Sangrone, and I'm sure my grandfather and my great-grandfather will be as well. Uh, what are the future plans as regards Ribby Road Depot? Well, thank you for your very kind words. It's a team effort. I couldn't do anything without these wonderful people who go out there and volunteer most days of the week to actually do wonderful things for us. So that's a crucial part of it. Plans for Rigby Road Depot are quite monumental really, but the tram shed itself is historically so important, I can't even begin to, to, to tell you just how, how many pluses that ticks to preserve that building. It's one of the last surviving first generation tram sheds in the world that is still operating with double deck tram cars in it. Um, it's also um, you know, the only one on a tramway in, in the British Isles that never closed. Um, 
for a tramway to close, it has to be you know, deregistered by the Board of Trade after a three-month cessation of service. And, and you know, Blackpool is one of the ones that is still going, basically, on its original licence, which is incredible. So from the 29th of September 1885 to now, um, that's, a, that's a remarkable, unique achievement. So this tram shed's important. It's structurally interesting. It's a huge space. You know, it gives us a vast win to actually restore that. We haven't got enough trams to completely fill it, but I want um, a heritage visitor attraction in there. So I want an exhibition hall where we can display some of our treasures alongside other Blackpool treasures to bring that family factor into Blackpool. So it's not just the trams that are unique and important. It's the history of all of the other things that we've done in and around this site that I want to pull together. I'm not going to say what they are at this stage of the game. That's a little trump card up my sleeve. But they'll make it interesting for families to want to come and see what we do. So it's not just for enthusiasts, it's for everybody. And I hope to be able to complete that first phase and get that tram shed restored at the end of the next five year period, which will take us to 2025. There you go, all the exciting things that are going on in the world of transport on the file coast. And of course